While NASA celebrated the retrieval of valuable asteroid samples, SpaceX was bracing for disaster in a race against Mother Nature. After missing several launch windows due to bad weather, it seems SpaceX would have to cancel Falcon Heavy's first mission with NASA. Let's talk about how SpaceX was able to avoid this mishap and why this launch holds so much significance. While awaiting approval from the FAA for Starship's launch this week, SpaceX delighted enthusiasts with an impressive Falcon Heavy launch. This powerful rocket propelled NASA's Psyche mission into space on Friday, October 13th. Originally, the plan was to launch a NASA craft toward the peculiar metal asteroid, Psyche, a day earlier. Unfortunately, nature didn't cooperate. In a pre-launch briefing on Wednesday, October 11th, bleak forecasts gave only a 20% chance of favorable weather conditions the following morning. Anticipating unfavorable weather due to an approaching storm, the decision was made to postpone the launch attempt on Thursday. Instead, SpaceX aimed to take advantage of better weather forecasted for Friday and Saturday's launch windows. Arlena Moses, the launch weather officer with the US Space Force, highlighted the concerns during Wednesday's briefing, explaining that the focus had shifted from just local storms to lift-off winds. Winds were expected to quickly intensify from the south and southwest, reaching speeds of 20 to 25 miles per hour, with the possibility of stronger gusts. The challenging conditions expected to persist through Thursday's launch window led mission teams to opt for a delay until Friday. Arlena Moses, during the briefing, explained... For our first backup window on Friday morning, there's a 50% chance of favorable conditions. Our concerns still revolve around storms in the area, including anvil clouds, layered clouds, and cumulus clouds associated with storms. Looking at Saturday morning, our third backup window, the probability remains around 50% with similar conditions. While there might be some storms, we anticipate most of them occurring after our morning launch windows. The decision to skip Thursday's window was influenced by the peculiarities of Psyche's launch vehicle, SpaceX's Falcon Heavy allows limited launch recycle attempts, meaning the rocket can be fully fueled for launch only up to two times before requiring maintenance. This limitation posed a significant constraint, making it impossible to delay the launch for more than a couple of days. Tim Dunn, NASA's senior launch director for the Launch Services program, elaborated during Wednesday's briefing, stating, The restricted recycle attempts are due to the substantial quantity of densified liquid oxygen used for each attempt in Falcon Heavy configuration. After the second attempt, we would need about five days to replace and replenish the liquid oxygen in the ground sphere to achieve the required densified state. Much to the relief of both NASA and SpaceX, the mission successfully launched on Friday. The Falcon Heavy roared to life with all 27 of its first stage Merlin engines firing, generating an astonishing 5 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. This immense power propelled Psyche toward its celestial counterpart, marking the commencement of its monumental 2.17 billion mile journey. Following a meticulously planned series of events, Psyche separated from the Falcon Heavy's upper stage shortly after its launch. The initial burn of the Falcon Heavy's second stage concluded roughly eight and a half minutes after liftoff. Around 54 minutes into the flight, a second two-minute burn occurred, leading to the spacecraft's separation at one hour, two minutes, and nine seconds after liftoff. Subsequently, Psyche spent approximately an hour unfolding and deploying its massive solar arrays, spanning an impressive area of 74 square meters and extending the length of a tennis court. This spacecraft is now on a four-year expedition to reach the asteroid. To conserve fuel and expedite its journey, Psyche will utilize a series of gravity assists from Mars and Earth. The mission aims to arrive at its destination in early 2027. Upon reaching the asteroid, Psyche will spend approximately 21 months in orbit around it. During this period, the spacecraft will conduct a multitude of scientific observations and measurements to comprehensively analyze Psyche's structure, composition, topography, magnetism, and thermal properties. The Psyche mission holds the promise of substantial impacts and benefits for both scientific knowledge and society as a whole. From a scientific perspective, it has the potential to significantly advance our understanding of the solar system, particularly concerning the formation and evolution of planetary cores. By meticulously comparing Psyche's distinctive properties with those of other asteroids and planets, scientists can refine existing models and theories. This comparison will illuminate the origins of the solar system and how it has transformed over time. Moreover, exploring Psyche holds the key to vital clues about the origin and diversity of life in our solar system. Scientists are eager to investigate the asteroid for any signs of water or organic molecules, possibly delivered by impacts or comets. These findings could provide profound insights into the potential for life beyond Earth. Recently, NASA experienced another stroke of good luck when the agency unveiled the world's first glimpse of the Bennu sample. This revelation occurred during a live webcast event on October 11th, providing an overview of the initial analyses conducted on this extraterrestrial material. These preliminary scientific findings are remarkably promising, indicating the presence of water and a substantial amount of carbon in the rocks and dust, as stated by NASA Administrator Bill Nelson. 
This discovery suggests that asteroids could have delivered the fundamental components of life to Earth. The OSIRIS-REx sample retrieved from the nearly 4.5 billion year old near-Earth asteroid Bennu in October 2020 made its way back to Earth in a capsule on September 24th. It descended from the spacecraft and landed in the Utah desert. Since then, Scientists have been diligently studying this abundant material, which exceeded their expectations. The analysis of the sample's surface, conducted just inside the top of the canister, yielded these intriguing results, which were shared during a live NASA broadcast from the agency's Johnson Space Center in Houston. This mission represents the largest asteroid sample ever brought back to Earth. Interestingly, there was so much additional material inside the canister that the team has yet to explore the bulk sample. Primarily, scientists studying Bennu are delving into Earth's primordial era, a time when our planet transitioned from an intensely hot world with a harsh surface to something resembling a muddy sphere. By carefully examining these pebbles and rocks using advanced equipment on Earth, researchers like Loretta and her colleagues aim to unravel the mysteries of how terrestrial planets like Earth and Mars formed. Furthermore, they are exploring the possibility that asteroids like Bennu could have seeded Earth with the essential components for life. In their preliminary analysis of the dust, Scientists struck gold with a sample that contains nearly 5% carbon by mass and is rich in water in the form of hydrated clay minerals. This finding strongly suggests that asteroids similar to Bennu might have delivered the majority of the water currently found in Earth's oceans, lakes, and rivers billions of years ago. By meticulously examining the asteroid dust, including its water and organic molecules, these scientists are piecing together essential clues. Their goal is to better understand the remarkable transformation Earth underwent, evolving from an uninhabited mud ball into the vibrant, life-filled world we know today. The significance of this mission extends far beyond unraveling the mysteries of Earth's origins and the potential beginnings of life. The materials collected from this mission offer valuable insights into a myriad of other crucial questions. For instance, both NASA and private companies are eyeing the prospect of mining resources from asteroids to fuel human exploration deeper into the solar system. A comprehensive study of Bennu will shed light on the resources present in such carbon-rich asteroids and the challenges associated with harvesting and processing these resources for fuel. Furthermore, planetary defense is a paramount concern. Bennu, being one of the asteroids orbiting outside the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, holds particular interest. Scientists have calculated a 1 in 2,700 chance that Bennu could collide with Earth between now and September 2182. While Bennu is only about 12th the size of the colossal asteroid that led to the extinction of dinosaurs nearly 70 million years ago, it still possesses enough destructive potential to obliterate multiple cities or cause a massive tsunami. Understanding the nature of Bennu is vital. It equips scientists and engineers with the knowledge needed to strategize the best methods for altering the orbit of threatening asteroids in the future. NASA has fostered close collaborations with space agencies in Japan and Canada for this mission, forming international partnerships that extend beyond borders. Moreover, scientists from numerous countries have joined forces to study the material brought back from this groundbreaking mission. This collaborative endeavor exemplifies a unified pursuit of knowledge, uniting humanity instead of dividing it. What do you think? Could these resource-rich asteroids be used to improve the quality of life on Earth? Please share your thoughts in the comments below.